In October 2023, my first attempt at a competitive marathon race for seven years had ended in frustration and failure on the streets of York. A pulled hamstring had caused me to DNF at 17 miles, but one good training block later, plenty of long runs, plenty of marathon pace miles banked. I was ready to return to the marathon on the streets of Manchester 2024. So let's go and put that right. So the days leading into the Manchester Marathon have been ones of positivity and mental visualisation. Logistically, everything went smoothly on the morning. We got to the Old Trafford Cricket Ground. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Collection of YouTubers here. Hello. All the good stories YouTube. to tell. Hello, YouTube. So social niceties done and bag dropped. It was time to make my way to the start line and hit the streets of Manchester for 26.2 miles. Here it goes. Good luck to me. So leading into the race, various online predictors had been saying I should aim for 7.20 pace for a 3.12 marathon, but I'm a little bit older and wiser than that, so I decided to set off more steadily, a couple of first miles, 7.33, 7.30, heart rate right where I expected it to be. Now a little note on the heart rate data you can see here, I did not have that displayed on my screen, I was running everything entirely to perceived effort, so it's pleasing to see I was hitting the low 160s heart rate that I reckoned would be my marathon heart rate on this particular day. So going through Manchester city centre here, you can see the sub 3 trains going in the opposite direction, oh how I wish I could be with them maybe one day but yeah clicking along nicely 730 pace which was about 316 marathon pace nothing to worry about at the minute legs were feeling pretty comfortable as i enjoyed manchester putting on its big city marathon so given the fact this was my first competitive marathon in eight years i was clipping off the miles fairly evenly feeling comfortable at this stage not getting distracted by the crowds and surging, but keeping a nice steady pace and nice steady heart rate. All is good in the hood at present. So I like to think of the first six miles of a marathon as being a bit of a warm up. And whilst I wasn't feeling supersonic, as Oasis once sung about, we kept hearing their music around the course, I wasn't feeling too bad. 7.30 pace, and that would put me on for a 3.16 marathon and a quite satisfactory day at the office. After the six mile point we're headed away from Manchester city centre and this is where things started to get a little bit tougher. I felt we're dragging up a little bit of a slope uh, into a breeze, nothing too bad there to worry about at 7.39 and 7.36, heart rate still in the low 160s. So things are going okay on paper, however I wasn't running on paper, I was running on my legs and at this stage I started to get knee pain. I started to get very sore quads. Now, anybody who's had the pleasure of running with me during this marathon training block will know I'm constantly saying, I doubt these legs will be able to hold up to a marathon. I've got knee pain here, I've got that. But I tried to put it out of my head. I put it out of my head for the last few weeks. But we can see the time slipping 7.49, 7.45. Um, we've got runs coming the other way, sub three train again. And oh dear, we're seeing me slip past the eight minute mile range. Into mile 15, heading towards Altrincham and 8.54. So heart rate still plays in the high 150s, up the famous hill, nothing to worry about there. Great crowd support when you get to the top actually. But now we can start to see the wheels really falling off over 9 minute miling. And there, my friends, at the 18 mile point, my marathon finished. And I'm going to explain why. So many of you may be aware that my wife Dawn was also running in the race. She'd set off 10 minutes behind me in a slightly later wave. And I was fearful that had I bombed even more with her expecting to run about 325 pace, she'd come past me. So what's the problem there you might think? Male pride, getting beaten by your wife? No it isn't. Any of you who've seen our Yorkshire Marathon video from back in October will realise that when I pulled over at about 17 miles, she stopped her race too, even though she could have got to the end. And my real fear was that she would come plowing up behind me as I slowed to 9, 10, 11 minute miling and she would pull out of her race and DNF again. So what I did, I thought, could I get to the end? Yes, of course I can get to the end. I'd have probably have run a 3.40, 3.45 on the day. Nothing wrong with that, apart from a bit of wounded runner's pride. But I really thought the risk of Dawn coming past me, seeing me maybe cramping up, 
hobbling along and walking would absolutely be terrible for her morale and her chances of finishing the Manchester Marathon. So let me tell you what happened next. Having pulled out 18, I hid behind a gatepost in case Dawn came past and saw me. After about 10 minutes, she didn't come past because she wasn't having a great race also. You can check out her video for that. I then walked along the road back towards Timperley, looking over my shoulder every so often until I saw her coming along. Hopped up onto a little green area, hid behind a sloping tree so she didn't see me coming past, and then once she'd gone past, made my way to Timperley tram station, got on the tram, back to Old Trafford and back to the race village. So it wasn't the most glorious way to finish my marathon in Manchester, but there you go. Could I have finished? Yes. Would I have finished in a good time? No, probably about 3.40, 3.45 for me. So why didn't I do so? Collect that medal, grit it out like many other people did. There's your answer. I did not want another double DNF on the Two Running Brooms channel like we had last October at Yorkshire. You may agree with my decision. You may not agree with my decision. That's entirely up to you. But that's a decision I made given all the information I had on the day. So now I'm going to go in and look at why I think things went wrong for me in the Manchester Marathon 2024. So certainly not the marathon story from Manchester I wanted to bring you. But before we have a look at why that happened, I'm just going to go through the many positives I can take from the training block and the race itself. Firstly, the training itself. I didn't miss a run I set out to do. I completed every session I set out to do, every long run, and I did the mileage I thought was reasonable for a person of my age with my running experience. I averaged about 58 miles a week during the marathon block, and the time I spent on feet, when I was at my best, that would have been equivalent to a week in the high 60s or 70s. So I certainly put the work in running-wise. Come on then, Mr. Positive, let's keep them coming. Well, in order to complete the whole training block, I had to go without injury and without illness for the full 15 weeks, which I did. So that's a bonus. I think I learned something there about how to curate my body and keep it going. I think I made many good choices leading into the marathon. Chose the right pair of shoes. There was absolutely nothing wrong with those Pro 3s. I felt I could have popped along quite nicely in them on another day. I discovered the world of OTE supercar fueling, so thanks to Gary for putting me onto that. And if only I could execute a marathon like you did at Yorkshire, I'd be a happy man. And I think a biggie for both of us was mindset. I can't remember a time where we've both gone to a big race so calm, so focused, so confident. I felt absolutely serene and confident all the way, stepping onto the start line, even running the first six miles. I thought, this is okay. I had a little mantra in my head. I'm in control of this. Whatever happens, I'm in control. I'm in control. And I was in control, even to the extent where I made, I think, the right decision to step off the course at 18 miles. And another thing I got absolutely right was the pre-race logistics. I must have watched my own video on everything you need to do in the last three days before the marathon, because we did them absolutely calm, organized and settled. But I can't spin this into a totally positive tale because I did not finish the marathon for the second time in succession. So I've been racking my brains. I've had plenty of lovely people message me and give me their thoughts. So I've come up with three reasons that I think might have contributed to the DNF. The first one is pacing. Now, I set off at solid 7.30, 7.29. So what I actually did, I'll put it up on the screen now, I set my watch to have 400 meter interval. So I was just running totally in the moment. So I was just looking at my watch thinking, right, what pace will this 400 meter be? Just keep me going little bit by little bit. And it was working to start with. Even when the wheels started to fall off, I was playing little games with myself, like let's get the next one under 7.45 pace. Or even if the next one is nearer to eight, I want the next one at 7.30 so I can just try and push on and have a little surge. I thought I could mentally get my way through the marathon in that regard, but the body wasn't playing ball with that. So I was setting off at 3.16 pace, too ambitious, perhaps in retrospect, but even so, I would have expected after all the training I've done to maybe fade or even bonk a little bit at 23, 24 miles, as often happens in the marathon. I wouldn't have expected to be having the wheels fall off at 10 to 13 miles and be totally cooked by 18 miles, even with a slight bit of pace misjudgment. I thought 3.16 was reasonable. As you know, the chorus have been saying 3.10, 3.12. Perhaps I could have gone off at 3.20 pace, but even if I had, as I say, it didn't account for feeling so flat and just having no running in me after 18 miles. All right, the bigger when it comes to marathon training is the long run. Now we did seven runs of 20 miles. 
So on paper, that's a really good set of long runs, but there's two issues there. A few people have pointed out, maybe we should have gone 22, 23 miles. So we did our long runs and we did our faster work. In fact, it's a very good piece of analysis done by Tim Gross on his channel, where he compared our training against the might of Nick Vester and Matt Reese, the Welsh runner, showed that we got 20% of harder running as opposed to 80% of easier running, which is about the right mix, most people would say. I think what happened though is we bifurcated the two. So all our long runs, apart from the Wyndham 20, were at easy pace. And we tended to do our marathon pace work in big chunks. So I ran two half marathons with Dawn, the Bath Two Tunnels and the Brass Monkey, at around about what I expected my marathon pace to be. <clears throat> what we didn't do was in our longer runs and medium long runs, put those chunks of marathon pace work in. So the marathon pace work we did was either in great long chunks of 13.1 miles or little bits after work up and down here so that's one reflection perhaps had our marathon pace work been more spread out across different runs rather than chucked into a few runs that might have worked better and then the final reason that's been suggested and one that really isn't a very nice thought is that you only have so many marathons and so many years bashing them out in your legs a very fine vet 60 runner um, commented on my strava that he's found over the last eight or nine years in a marathon he can get to 10 miles then his legs stop playing ball he's still been able to crank out in recent times 36 minute 10ks and um, 81 minute half marathons but he's really struggled with the marathon so perhaps it's just the case that the legs won't do it anymore so what next what changes can i make i think i'm going to add in some plyometrics into the training as i've said before in previous videos i spend a lot of time sitting down driving between meetings i need poppier bouncier legs day to day i'm also going to introduce more running drills before most runs that i do i think they would really help me feel a little bit more poppy feel my legs more engaged it may work it may not work i don't know but i'm not going to give up yet as we do say on this channel we're going to keep on keeping on trying to get it right until we've exhausted every possibility every avenue of improvement and i finally have to say my competitive marathon days are at an end but that day is not yet so watch out for future marathons coming on this channel later in the year so that's manchester marathon 2024 wrapped up we came we saw we didn't conquer and on that note if you've not seen dawn's video about her experience of the manchester marathon do go and check it out i'll put a link to it at the end so we pick ourselves up we dust ourselves down and we keep going and remember folks keep on keeping on keep on keeping on